team at Altona for the spectacular, sensational case they've done with the Otaxio Billery. That was uh, very outstanding. So we have this uh, relatively large polyp into the transverse colon, which is about uh, three to four centimeter, and um, is extending across two different folds. And if you look at the macroscopic appearance, there is a little bit of depression in the oral side of the lesion, but in general, the P pattern looks uh, very good. So we did the boost open? Okay. And uh, I am looking uh, underwater because uh, most of the time underwater is very helpful to emphasize the microscopic appearance, the P pattern and the vessel pattern. And also we are using a scope that allows us to switch to MBI. And based on the MBI appearance, I cannot see any suspicion of uh, submucosa deep invasion. So the problem of resection of this polyp that um, doing EMR is a good solution, but it's exposing the patients to significant risk of the recurrence. So one of the potential solution to overcome the issue of recurrence is to make a sort of combined resection, which means that we will making a, a mucosa incision all around the lesion over here until the oral side and afterwards we start resection with the snare. So to make this, we need a um, long lasting solution. So we're very glad to use uh, this solution from uh, Boston Scientific or IceGel has been shown a couple of times already. So I don't think I need to add more, so needle out. Let me show you very briefly, needle out. So the technique for uh, submucosal injection, which sometimes is at uh, the the, the good starting point of uh, advanced EMR or ESD. So normally we try to go too deep like this. Indeed, this is a sort of mistake because when we go too deep, we are injecting in the wrong place. So after advancing the needle deep, we need to adjust the position of the needle and uh, try to understand whether or not we are in the submucosal space. So I will ask my nurse, my assistant to inject. You see, this is a nice elevation. So it means the needle was in the right space. Okay. And as you can see, I'm doing everything underwater still because this makes the tissue very floppy. And also it's very nice for recognizing the borders of the lesion. So again, advance the needle and afterwards pull back gently. Inject. 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 Okay. okay, so let me have a look here. Okay, so inject again on this side. Yep. One, no, 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 just hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, inject. One, One. Two. two, okay. Three. Okay, very nice. Also, we need to go on this side. Okay, inject. Yes. So we are preparing the first mucosal incision on the anal side. Four, stop. and stop. So now, can I have a knife for the section, please? So, you know, doing the mucosal incision allows us to define the borders and also to reduce the risk of uh, recurrence, especially when the lesions are as big as this one in this difficult position, because you see we are um, into the transverse colon where we have a limited lumen, we cannot retroflex easily. And the risk of recurrence for this lesion is very high. So I'm using a short tip dual knife now. Okay, needle out. So there's something wrong with the generator. It's okay. Yep. Yeah. 
Okay. So you see tiny incision. So the generator is not working well anyway. So delineating the borders will allow me to place the snare properly without leaving tissue behind. Okay. Let me have a look. We have a tiny vessels who are bleeding. We try to take care immediately of that. Alessandro, we admire your submarine technique. And um, um, you move to another room. Right. If you, if you, if you agree. Of but course. We, we come back again and again to you okay. because we Thank you so much. presume that this uh, takes some Taking time. Taking a little bit long. Yeah, okay. you're right. So you go on and we, we will come back to you. Yeah, thank you so far. Sandro, what did you do in the meantime? Oh, we finished it. Sorry. We're very sorry. We did the mucosal incision and afterwards we proceeded with the snare. You see. The lesion is uh, almost entirely resected. Let me show underwater. It's important that we look to the... Did you do the whole right. procedure underwater? Most of, most yeah. of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we are trying to show you... Okay. So we, get, we got a little bit of bleeding in this area. <clears throat> But there were a lot of vessels exposed. So now I will use my snare to coagulate the little vessels to prevent the risk of bleeding. And if we have a pure stat gel, I would love to have the gel to be used to cover the resected area. So first let me start. Can we have a soft cog? Soft coagulation modality? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, just the tip, of, just the tip of the snare, please. Out, only the tip. Yeah. Only the tip of the snare. Only out, only the. Your result looks great, Alessandro. Fantastic. No, no, no. Only the tip. Only the tip. The tip. The tip. So just a second. Okay, like this. So now have a look to these vessels you see here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are setting the <coughs> generator. And also, I love to do this underwater because the tissue becomes very easy to manage. There is no pressure. Mm -hmm. OK. OK, there are other vessels here. You see minimal contact. We have another vessel here. Alessandro? It takes a little, a little bit of time, but you, I think it uh, can be um, helpful in prevention of the re-bleeding of delayed bleeding. You okay. have all any time until tomorrow morning, oh, and, uh, but you your so actual result looks great. You are a real magician. Congratulations for this wonderful result. <clears throat> okay, thank you so much. So then can we get some more to Professor Rösch?